Okay, now let's move to the uh, atrial arrhythmias. And I have some good news for you here. The, the, long, the long criteria that we just covered for sinuses really applies mainly for sinuses or for sinus arrhythmias. What I will help you with here is that the other rhythms, there's one simple thing or one characteristic, one essential thing about it, that if you only find it in this rhythm, in this particular rhythm, and that will make life easy for you. So this essential or these classical findings will all what you need to find or when you find it you don't need to go any further this, this is how you know just you can recognize this just like that now this the only one again and say sinuses are you know you have to apply every single criteria but for arrhythmia junctional and especially for ventricular some rhythms now you will see you can just recognize by looking at it you don't have to calculate heart rate you don't have to calculate uh, PR intervals, you don't have to calculate QRS to uh, PR uh, ratio. You're just going to look at it and that's how you will know it. And for atrial, I'm going to cover two of two here. And first of all is atrial flutter. And flutter means fast. Now, there's one very classical thing about atrial flutter. I'll talk about it in a second. First of all, um, in this case, now we are we're done with sinus, meaning now we are talking about firing somewhere else other than the SA nodes. In the atrial, it comes from the atria. So it is now the atria decides or um, some of the uh, multiple areas, could be multiple areas in the atria, decide to play SA, decide to play a pacemaker. So you can think of this like rebellion. There's a central government called SA node and there are multiple rebellions somewhere in the atria decide to make a government or to start firing at the same time so sometimes this firing from multiple area can produce as high as 200 to 350 beat per minute now these are only in the atria so if they pass down to the ventricle to the ventricles you can imagine how fast the heart rate will be and how lethal that can be so here is the job of the normal hopefully normal AV nodes that will only let a specific number of this high rate down to the to cause a ventricular contraction however that doesn't mean that you know AV alone can fix the problem sometimes we have to intervene and give some medication to stop this um, chaotic uh, impulsation from the atria so this is what is classical about it the because of this fast rate and because it's 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 kind of chaotic it, it gives the p wave shape now no there's no longer p normal shape here because when you say whenever whenever there's a p and it's normal shape it's sinus now what is look like what we think it's a p wave it looks like a saw toothed p wave and that's what i call the flatter flutters waves so and so that is was a classical about it now everything else could be uh, again normal or abnormal so let's look at the criteria now the heart rate here you it could be uh, within normal 100 and it could be up to 300 so meaning that every one now I'm talking about ventricular heart rate of course that every atrial contraction will pass down to cause a ventricular contraction so it varies it varies so that's why the heart rate is not necessarily a classical or a, 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 yeah classical criteria now again this could be this rhythm 99% of the cases it is regular rhythm however it could be irregular so that's why the second criterion also is not necessarily classical the p wave is definitely abnormal here and it looks like a su the p wave is abnormal here and look like a so and you see the shape now um, the QRS is normal because the ventricles are not affected and the PR is not there's no way to measure the PR because there's no P wave so how do you recognize atrial flutters two things the P wave is not normal it's not there instead you see a so toothed P wave and second the QRS is normal that's it so let's see this shape so this is what I'm talking about the the, the shape as you see of the P wave it looks it has a sharp edge all right and uh, now 
you still I may ask you to calculate the heart rate but again the heart rate really will not change the rhythm but here just to practice there are 10 of them so that's make the heart rate of 100 now again as you see this is a regular rhythm which most commonly the atrial flutter are regular but what will make the decision here is the, the shape of the P wave and I'm him giving you a shape of the so tooth and this is how it looks like so it has a sharp edge and the second thing is the QRS is normal within normal so when you see this shape when you see uh, this rhythm and you see this P wave looks like this with a fast heart rate regular and mainly the QRS is normal then that's an atrial flutter so when you look at it first of all as, you, as soon as you don't see a P wave you can eliminate four options as soon as you look and you see this is a not normal P wave four options are eliminated right away sinus normal sinus rhythm sinus tachycardia sinus bradycardia and sinus dysrhythmia when we complete the rest of the rhythm you will see that okay you may find another thing here that eliminates another four so you're down to two or so so it gets it gets easier so that's as far as atrial flat the second one is atrial fibrillations take this fibrillations always 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 means irregular rhythm Fibrillation always mean, always means irregular rhythm. We have only two type of fibrillations, atrial and ventricular. We're going to talk about the atrial one here. Again, from the name, atrial means it's coming from the atria. This means that the QRS is fine. It's not ventricular. Second, since an atria, that means there's no P wave or there's no normal P wave. Third, it's a fibrillation that means it's irregular. So if I give you a description of words, or if I give you a, a strip and you look at it and say, okay, there's no P wave, this is regular, and the QRS is normal, that's an atrial fibrillation. You're done. So let's see. Again, the atrial fibrillation, here the atria is acting as a pacemaker, and when that happens, there will be a lot of heart rate. Now, or sorry, a lot of atrial contraction. But we have the AV there to present or to protect the ventricles from this heart this heart. now patient by the way atrial fibrillation is the most common dysrhythmia that you will see in the hospital atrial fibrillation is the most common dysrhythmia we see in the hospital and it's responsible for 20 percent of the stroke cases that you will see the thing again that i want you to know is um patients with atrial fibrillation could be with normal heart rate and that's what we called controlled atrial fibrillation they usually take medication or they the case is not bad or the patient may be admitted with atrial fibrillation if they don't take their medication or if the prognosis is poor or if they become dehydrated they come with a diagnosis called atrial fibrillation with rvr which is rapid ventricular response and that's when many of these 300 for example they will go down reach to the ventricles and cause heart, uh, heart rate as high as 150 or 160 sometimes we call it uh, atrial fibrillation with rapid ventricular response now in the ECG first of all the heart rate may varies as I said it could be controlled which means normal between 60 to 100 or could be higher than that we'll call it uncontrolled or we call it rapid ventricular response as far as rhythm always irregular since it's fibrillation it's always irregular P wave it's not there we can't see it because of the firing is not from the SA node QRS is normal this is an atrial problem and the PR interval is not possible to calculate. So all what you need is, when you look at a rhythm, you don't find a P wave, and you find it irregular, with a normal QRS, that's called atrial fibrillation, done. Let's look at the ECG. So look at it, now you can see that, um, you can see the fibrillation here. This is not artifact, this is a fibrillation. These are all supposedly P waves, but none of them coming from the SA. So, Let's see. First of all, let's calculate the heart rate. There's nine beats here, non-QRS, so that makes the heart rate of 90. It doesn't help me much. Okay. But when you see 90 again, you can eliminate many of, you know, it's definitely not sinus cardia, for example. The distance, as you see, it is not regular. So since it's irregular, I can eliminate right away sinus, normal sinus rhythm, sinus cardia, sinus bradycardia. Now, since, since there's no P wave, I can eliminate all 
for sinus. And since the shape of the P is not normal, but at the same time, it's not that um, sharp edge, so toothed uh, P wave, then it's not atrial flutter. Okay, so what it is? Well, I have a heart rate against my have. First of all, it's irregular, so definitely it, it's highly possible to be fibrillation because we said fibrillation always irregular. And then the second thing is, so this is how this fibrillation, this is really what's happening. This is how the, the ventricles are flattered. All right, oh sorry, are fibrillated. And then the next thing is the QRS is normal. Okay, I have an irregular rhythm with no P wave and a normal QRS. That's, a, that's an atrial fibrillation, done.